sao Ing ring shring Ka e ni la ring Ha sa ka ha la ring Sa ka la ring Sao ain kling ring shring Aum Namaste So we're going to talk about real knowledge versus verbal delusion. And I want to highlight this because people are afraid to think about how much enmeshed they are in the illusions of name and form. They're afraid of it because if they look too closely, they will see, well, like the so-called children's story, which is actually quite sophisticated. The emperor has no clothes. The society that we live in today is based completely on abstractions and words that have no equivalent in reality. And let alone, we brought up, you know, the examples of nations and corporations and things like that. Let alone that. Well, what about the very first word? I. Why is that the first word? Because it's the root thought of the mind. Every single thought is based on the thought I. But this I is an illusion. <laughs> it doesn't really exist. We've been talking about this for years and nobody's freaking out. But if yesterday's video we published that nations and corporations are illusory, just empty words with no meaning, huh? everybody freaks out. I think the reason is that we've been hearing from the scriptures. Well, I think because I don't get any comments on this. huh? Everybody's too chicken to even leave a comment. But I think, in my opinion, it's due to the fact that we have heard from scriptures and preachers, like Zen, especially teachers, saying over and over and over and over again that the ego doesn't exist. And we've become numb. We don't get it. We don't take in the meaning. It becomes, oh yes, yes, ego doesn't exist. Ya la 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 la. See? In other words, we have fallen asleep. I think it's not a coincidence that verbal delusion and sleep are right next to each other. <laughs> because what happens when a person suffers from a verbal delusion is that they go around wide awake, but dreaming. And they think that countries and corporations and other things which are built just out of words are real. Then there's another misunderstood quote that goes around a lot from the Tao Te Ching that one who knows does not speak and one who speaks does not know. And this is misunderstood as meaning anyone who attempts to teach or share their knowledge can't be enlightened. Huh? Well, this is another form of verbal delusion. Because specifically what he's talking about is the Tao. If you try to describe the Tao, just like if you try to describe Nirvana, Nibbana, or Brahman, it's impossible. It, the, these things are ineffable. They cannot be explained by words. They can be experienced, yes. 
and they should be. <laughs> but as soon as we try to explain by words, then we get into the self-limiting duality of language. If I have a word like hot, then I have to have a word like cold. If I have a word like up, I need a word like down. Huh? If I have a word like Brahman, well, what's the antonym to that? Well, there is no antonym to that <laughs> because it's non-dual. So then this leads to the subject of real knowledge. Real knowledge is expressed in words. It's a vritti. But because it's in relationship with the Supreme, with Brahman, with Nirvana, with the Tao, it leads to self-realization. Even if it's completely fabricated. <laughs> huh? Some people like to complain or criticize that scriptures like the Puranas that talk about heavenly planets and gods and their pastimes and qualities and things like that. They like to complain that this is just imagination. All these gods and everything are just metaphors. Uh, they are metaphors. That's all right. It's still real knowledge. Why? It's in relationship with the Supreme. And it leads to the Supreme. I've showed this diagram. Here we go again. Huh? The four stages of consciousness, the four levels of the path, whatever you want to call it. That leads to self-realization. So it's real knowledge, even though <laughs> the lower stages are simply illusion huh, of various densities. The purpose is to bring one to self-realization. But the purpose of verbal delusion or the effect of verbal delusion is just the opposite. It makes one forget about self-realization and enlightenment and meditation and the truth. For example, every time we say, I. Now somebody's gonna criticize, well, you use the word I all the time. I think, I see, I know, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> yes, but that's only because of the limitations of language. The Buddha also used the word I. And he described that it's simply a convenience because actually he more often used the word this to refer to his body and mind. See? There's, these are code words. This means the individual self, the empirical self. And that means Brahman, the real self. Self with a capital S, the Supreme. So when an enlightened sage says, there is nothing like ego in this, huh? I think Ramana Maharshi said that. There is nothing like an ego in this. He's talking about himself. He doesn't have an ego. He got rid of it. So whenever a person like that uses the word I, try to understand, it's just a convention of language. It's just a convenience huh? so that we don't have to try to explain around it, you know. This aggregate of senses and consciousness and perceptions, <laughs> you know, that's an awfully unwieldy term. It's very awkward. So we just say I because that's how people take it. But anyway, the point is the verbal delusion begins with I. And the real knowledge begins with 
anything in relation to the supreme truth of Brahman, which is that there is no separate I. See, the Vedas lead step by step. Huh? Just like we've been doing a series on Lalita Sahasranam. And Lalita Sahasranam begins from the dualistic concept that there's such a thing as an I, a separate individual self, and that there's this goddess, huh? Lalita or Maya. And then gradually it's revealed that she is this world. She is time and space. She is light. She is energy. She is gravity. She is even consciousness. Well, if she's consciousness, that means there, there is nothing that we can label as I that is not actually Shakti. So again, we come to the conclusion that there really is no individual, that the creation is a seamless whole, huh? undivided, indivisible, complete, whole, Purna. And that it emanates from Brahman as an appearance, but it's not really true. The reason why is because it's temporary. And then we go again into the whole thing of anything that's not temporary is not fully real. And that applies to the world because the world appears in the morning when we wake up, and it disappears again at night when we go to sleep. So the world is temporary. And then, of course, somebody's going to say, <laughs> well, the world continues to exist while you're asleep, and then it's still there when you wake up, and the people who were awake while you were sleeping will tell you that. Oh, really? Well, tell me this, then. Are these people who are testifying to the existence of the world while I was asleep part of the world? Yes. <laughs> so you see, there is no source of evidence that can testify to the reality of the world. And this is why it actually has never been proven by philosophy to actually exist. Now, some philosophers will take the existence of the world as an assumption, a supposition, an axiom. But actually, philosophy has never been able to prove the existence of the world for this very reason. That from a subjective point of view, it appears and disappears. Therefore, it can't be real. And if we try to establish an objective point of view, anything that we may use as a reference of, for this objectivity is also part of the world. That's why it's called the universe. It's not a duoverse or a tri triverse. It's a universe. There's only one. You see? So everything that we think is real, <laughs> up to and including consciousness, is actually just an appearance in Brahman. So one of our uh, viewers gave a beautiful text from a Zen master, Hui Hua. And he's basically saying, if there is no ego, no self, then there is no one to receive impressions. Then there is no one to be conscious. Therefore, consciousness and impressions are simply illusory. They're not real. See, and all this leads to the state of dissolving the ego and attaining <laughs> complete self-realization in Brahman, which, of course, is the object of all spiritual life.
ओम सत्सत ओम शक्ति ओ